This church has not been operating as it should. There should be more people prophesying. There should be more people giving messages in tongues. There should be more people interpreting. Amen. There should be more people using the gifts that God has given. Amen. But 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I'm going right back to verse 1 again. Hallelujah. 12.1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. I would not have you unaware. Unfortunately, most of the church is unaware. They don't have any idea. They don't know how God's supposed to work in the church. They just have a little form of religion and it's over. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Oh, heaven forbid that uh, the spirit would move. And, they, and it, I, I talked to a, a Methodist pastor's wife one night at one of them Gideon dinners. We like to go to the Gideon dinner. Usually they give us a good dinner. <laughs> And uh, we were talking about, my wife was talking about the, the Spirit of God moving in the service. Hallelujah. And uh, she says, well, the Spirit can move in our service as long as we're done by 12 o'clock. We've got one hour, and if he don't show up then, he, that's it. That's it. We, we ain't going to, we're going home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to beat the Baptist to the buffet. Hallelujah. You know that when you were Gentiles acquired by those dumb idols, even you were led. Therefore, I give you, understand that no man speak by the Spirit of God, call it Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, there are diversity of gifts, but the same Spirit. Differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation, but in the same God, which work all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit all. Okay. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit all. It is not to puff someone up. We've got that problem in churches. We've had it in the past. They're puffed up because God used them. They think they're something. Well, when you think you're something... You are looking for a fall when you forget that you are unworthy, unclean, and that you are rotten. Then you're looking for a fall. Amen. Amen. And we have seen that not long ago. There was a great revival broke forth in Florida. I said to my wife when I met that gentleman, and we're getting clear up to one of the later gifts here we're going to talk about. I had a spirit of discernment. We both did. I said, that boy's not right. Pretty powerful. Looked really good. Signs and wonders was happening. Claiming a lot of healings. Well, but then when we went in to certify them, they couldn't get that done. I guarantee you what that gal from Muscatine has healed of cancer. Yeah. Doctors said so. Amen. Oh, yes. Starting to get national attention. Amen. Starting to really feel big. Starting to sleep with his secretary. Starting to get caught. Put a black spot in the kingdom of God. Because the old saying, pride will bring a fall. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you must, as the Spirit of God starts to use you, you must realize that you are just a vessel. It is the power of God that is using you, but don't be afraid to be used. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. But don't be puffed up because you have all the gifts of the Spirit that operate in your life. I might be a little short on the fruit, but I sure had the gifts work. <laughs> I might not suffer as long as I ought to. Amen. Hallelujah. I might not always be a joy to me. I might get a little snarly when my wife won't listen to me. <laughs> all right. To profit all. But the manifestation of the Spirit and give to every man to profit all. For if one is given the Spirit, the word of wisdom, the word of wisdom, you have, why is it listed first? Because you need wisdom 
before you do anything else. You, you, you have to have some wisdom on how to use the gift of the Spirit. You need to know that when the next gift is a word of knowledge, you need to know whether that word of knowledge is for you or if you should go to that person and tell them what it is. And you better have the wisdom to know that if the word you get is God or gas. <laughs> I knew a prophet who had no wisdom. It's obvious what happened to him. Gifted in prophecy. Gifted in personal prophecy. That prophecy you gave more to the church, but personal prophecy. Gifted in personal prophecy. Like you wouldn't believe. He'd call people out and lay hands on them and he'd read their mail and he was very accurate. But he had no wisdom. There was a man in that church that I had been working with for about five years. He had come from the previous church that had closed and followed me to that church where I was, where I was finishing my studies for the ministry where I was getting hands-on experience after my Bible college experience. He'd been a crack addict and a crank addict. And he and just an addict. He was clean. God had set him free. He'd married a young lady. They had a fairly tumultuous marriage, but they were still together. Prophet called him out. Got a word from God. Didn't exercise any wisdom. The word was that you were raped when you were five. Now, whether he was or not, I don't know. But there was no wisdom involved. Because as soon as that, he said that, well, now I know why I was like I was. That's the reason I was such a mess. I don't remember it, but that's what made me bad. He just went right back. He just, just, just gone. Had an excuse. He should have never told him. Should have kept it to himself. And it might not have been God. I don't know. Because he sure didn't remember it. Got out of the realm where he's supposed to be working. Didn't have no wisdom. You have to have wisdom. Before you do anything, use wisdom. If anyone lack wisdom, James 1, 2 says, let him seek God and we poured out on him liberally. So that's no problem. You're going to have no problem getting the wisdom. You ask God for it and he'll give it to you. Amen? The word of knowledge by the same spirit. The word of knowledge can change people's lives. It can bring them out of a spot where they're stuck at. You have the right word, do it the right way, do it under God, and it can change their life. I had one time I had word in service, just fear not the spirit. The lady got saved that moment. Just ran to the altar and accepted Christ. Changed her life. Amen. Amen. Words of knowledge. Now, words of knowledge and wisdom may not be for someone else. You may be seeking it for yourself, Brother Ray. You may be seeking it from God to find out what job to take. Amen? Not every door that opens is of God. That's right. As ministers, we might receive an invitation somewhere, and God may check our spirit and say, Don't go there. Don't preach there. That place ain't right. Amen? That's using discernment and wisdom and knowledge. We need to use these things in our lives. These, these gifts here will do you as much good as home as they ever were. Ask God for some wisdom when you go to buy a car. We had cars that ran. They were pretty wore out. Linda had this little red car she thought you know, it was going to last forever, which it wasn't. And uh, this car sat there down by the, the laundromat. And I walked by it and I said, man, that's a deal. Guy had a for sale sign on this little car. 2001 car in 2001. 6,000 miles on it. Been wrecked a little and rebuilt. She looked at it first. She says, no, I don't want it. Yeah, 
Okay. I said, well, yeah, but I think it's really, boy, that's really a deal. I mean, it was like a third the price of a new car. She says, it's a four-cylinder. I don't want no four-cylinder. They don't have no power. I had a four-cylinder a long time ago and had no power. Well, after seeking the Lord and praying a little bit, she says, maybe we ought to, I didn't say much more. I talked about it a couple times. She says, maybe we ought to go try that car. So we went and wrote, drove that car. And, well, that four-cylinder, it's a different deal than what she had a car that was too big with a four-cylinder. She had this thing, don't worry, it goes fast as you want to go. Plenty of zip. And so we purchased that car after consulting God. It has been a blessing beyond belief. The truth was, God wants to have that car. It's been good to us. Amen? Amen. Wisdom. Another faith by the same spirit. We didn't get to the faith by the same spirit. We have a messed up conception of faith. You know that? My faith. We act like we can take a five gallon bucket and fill it full of faith and throw it on anything and we got it. Your faith. These faith people. You know, they teach this faith thing. It's your faith. It says it's a gift from God. Faith doesn't bubble up from here. It pours down from there. If you lack faith, you ask God for it just like you do wisdom. I just don't have the faith for it. Well, he does. Just ask him for it and he'll give it to you. But sir, you're operating in pride when you think the faith is yours. You won't hear this anywhere else. People don't understand this thing. I got the faith for it. You ain't got nothing. He's got the faith for it. He can give it unto you. It's a supernatural gift that comes from on high. Amen. That's why a double-minded man will receive nothing from God. When you see me operating in the gifts of the Spirit, in the gifts of healing, I act like a madman. Hallelujah. I'm moving. I'm slapping. I'm whapping. I'm praying fast. You know why? Because if I wait too long and I don't use the faith that God has given unto me, doubt of man will move in there and it, the miracle won't happen. You think about it a little bit and your doggone miserable brain will bring in lack of faith and destroy it. You either have faith that comes from God or fear that comes from your inside. Yeah. That's why that woman got healed of cancer, because I just, bang! Right. I was operating under the anointing. I was in the twilight zone there, you know, where you're not using your own mind at all. You don't want your mind to work. You want the mind of Christ to work. Amen? Amen. Faith, if you lack faith for something, I just don't have enough faith for it. Ask God. People do that. I just don't have enough faith to come through. Ask God. He'll pour it out on you. It's a gift from high. A gift. The gift of faith. Hallelujah. 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 To another, the working of miracles. The working of miracles. God can do miracles. He can do things that you don't think are possible. Amen. I have seen, when I operated in the faith that God gave me, I have seen some unbelievable miracles. When I acted crazy. I seen God fill a man's corn bin twice with corn. God did for him twice, he ain't gonna do it again. You know, a lot of people have miracles in their life and they still turn against God and don't amount, right. don't amount to nothing. <laughs> Just because you had a miracle don't mean you're gonna get saved. Amen. I've seen one of the first miracles I've seen, a lady healed in lupus, she never got right. I've seen people healed of cancer, they didn't get right with God. They just went right back the way they were. We've seen that not long ago. 
And then God went right back and took him down the other trail. Lord help him. I had went when Sister who moved away, when, when she asked me to go to the hospital for her sister to come, and her mother called me and said, Pastor, we want you to come and make arrangements in the hospital for these little babies. So I went to the hospital. One of them weighed 15 ounces, one of them 14 ounces. Born prematurely. And they said, we want you to make funeral arrangements. And I said, are they dead? She says, not yet. So I said, then the Lord says, they shall live and not die. The little boy died at three and a half years old. I did his funeral. He never got rid. The little girl is just perfect. She came to church once. Thanked the Lord, never showed up again. Mm -hmm. Year, year and a half later, she came out here during the week, crying and a weeping. I have cancer in my lymph nodes. She had a little pamphlet from the University of Hospital of Iowa. Says that 20% uh, of the people survive. You have a 20% chance to survive and telling her the things she needed to do to survive. She stood right there. I laid hands on her and I rebuked cancer in the name of Yahshua Jesus. Hallelujah. Sent that thing on her way. She was healed. Amen. Came to church once again. Thank God. Went on living her life. Yeah. Living with her boyfriend, living like the devil. One Sunday night, we got out the big projector and we showed Escape from Hell and her sister got her to come to church. A movie. Flames all around you. It's just a burning looking mess like you've never seen. It's very graphic. By golly, she got saved. <laughs> got baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, got saved, spoke in other tongues, been serving the Lord ever since. She's used to come to church here. She moved to Chicago. I ain't talked to her in about a year and a half, but the last I knew, she was in church in Chicago serving the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> it says some of them you saved with kindness. The kindness didn't seem to work. Some of them you saved with fear. Well, the fear seemed to do it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> some of them with kindness, some of them with fear. Amen. Hallelujah. Miracle. I prayed for a woman who had cancer. She had cancer in her woman parts. I never seen anything quite like it in all my life. She fell to the ground, her stomach heaved and her whole body traversed and carried on and another lady pastor there come brought a bucket over there and she threw up and Something into the bucket. I'd heard about that before, spitting out of cancer. Uh, she's been up to Brother Lamb's church four or five times since, and she is totally, 100% healed. Amen. Hallelujah. Lay hands on a truck, God will heal it. Yeah. Amen. I pray for people's dogs, cats, seen them get healed. Oh, God don't care about it. Yes, he does. He loves you. You love the critter, he'll fix it. You love the, you know, if you need the machine, he'll take care of it. Amen? Miracles. Don't always save people. But they demonstrate to someone that God is God. This one gal we prayed for last year. We were invited to a denominate, well, it's just a little independent church that don't know nothing about the gifts of the Spirit. Nothing whatsoever. They wanted to have a healing service for this particular gal with cancer. So I went. The pastor didn't know what to do. So he called me. 
Ain't that a shame? So he called me. What's he doing pastoring a church? I had a gal, she's still going up to the Roman church, who was getting, who woke up in the night speaking in tongues, getting signs and wonders and visions from God. You know what the priest that used to be here up on the hill did? He said, you go down and talk to him, because I don't know nothing about that. Send her down here. You'd think that would have converted her, wouldn't you? No, I just interpreted her dreams and told her about the gift of spirit and all that. She went right on back. She's still having them and stuff. Brother, I don't want that to be ignorant. We prayed for this gal. She got healed. She went to some guru that did some kind of guru thing. She claimed the guru healed her. But her brother got saved. He knew. He knew. Her brother got saved. It didn't save her. It did him. See, when, when Jesus came to the guy, to the, the paralytic that's laying there, and his parents, he says, whose sin is this? Is it, is it his or is it the parents? And he says, it ain't got nothing to do with sin. He said, this is to glorify and magnify God as a sign and a witness to those around it. Don't be afraid to pray for a miracle. It might be a sign and a witness to somebody around you. I prayed with people in the grocery store. I think God will just move on me and do crazy things. Hallelujah. Yeah. If you feel the urge to speak in other tongues and give a message in the service, don't sit there on your hands like a dummy. Speak out. He only gave me one word. Well, once you give one, the faith from on high will give you word number two. If you think that God has given you a word of wisdom or knowledge or prophecy, speak forth because what good is it to the church if you keep it to yourself? Lord, it's for everyone. It's for everyone. I mean, people come to you, boy, the Lord told me, come in secret. You're ashamed of him, he'll be ashamed of you. Amen. Hallelujah. Gifts of healing. Some people have different gifts of healing. God has given us a tremendous gift of healing for lupus, cancer in this church, or through me, my wife. Lupus, cancer, and um, epilepsy. We've seen them healed over and over and over again. Did it? The lady sitting right there, I think it was in the old chairs, but right there, Healed with epilepsy. She was a charismatic Roman. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. Miracles. Another prophecy. Prophecy is to speak forth for God. Any way you do it. I prophesy up here every Sunday morning as I preach. That's prophetic preaching. You get a lot of pathetic preaching, but a lot of places don't have prophetic preaching. Amen. And then there's prophecy like the sister give here, and then there's prophecy that foretells the future, and there's prophecy that is personal, that God will deal with the prophet directly to you. All those things need to be operating in the church. We need those things. They didn't die with the last apostle. That's one of the faults cessationist theologies. The other one is they died when they canonized the Bible. Give me a break. <laughs> to another discerning of spirits. You must use this discerning of spirits. You must ask God to give it to you. It'll save you. Women have it better than men. I do believe my wife has a strong discerning of spirits. Half the time I won't believe her. I'm getting better at it. So and so is not what they appear to be. They put on a false face. You need to know their heart. The discerning of spirit will tell you what kind of spirit is operating in that soul. You need to have that. You need to have it at work. 
You need to have it out in the world. You need to have it in church. You need to operate it. You need to ask God to give it to you. You need to lay on your face and cry till God gives it to you because it's one of the most important gifts of the entire thing. It is really an important gift. You need it. It goes along with wisdom. Discernment and wisdom it all work together. Listen to the voice of God. Amen? Amen. You can get an awful lot of discernment when you look at the fruit. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. That is the gift in the meeting. The initial evidence of the infilling of the Holy Ghost is speaking in other tongues. That's the evidence you're clear full. But this is separate. This is the gift in the meeting to speak forth in an unknown tongue and then someone interpret it, whether it be yourself or someone else. It's a way, it, the, together they equal prophecy. A word for the church. Okay? This should be happening way more. I'm not the only one that's got it in here. <laughs> but all these work that one and the same spirit, dividing every man severally as he wills. It's the will of God what you get. But then at the end of this, we're done. At the end of this, he says, seek the greater gifts. Get down on your face and say, God. Give me your gifts, your supernatural charismas. We're moving into the time of year that everybody expects to get a gift from somewhere. <laughs> you might, if you ain't careful, if they have another one of them days like Black Friday, it was real black for the one guy that got trampled to death. is never closed. There's not a guard on the door waiting for midnight to open it up for you to run in and fight somebody to get a gift of the Spirit to operate in your life. The door is open because on that day on Calvary, he opened up, tore the veil from the top to the bottom, opened up the Holy of Holies. You might go in and receive from God. Hallelujah. Thank you. He's not limited on what he can give. There's not a shortage on the pallet that sits there with the gift of the Holy Spirit like there is the Xbox. Amen. You're not going to run out Hallelujah. because he is a provider of all and you never run out of God. Amen. Yahweh God has all that you need. Full sermons are available anytime at www.anchoredinfaith.org. Contact us by calling 319-828-4815 or write us at Anchored in Faith, P.O. Box 204, Oxford, Iowa, 52322 or email us at tv at anchoredinfaith.org. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church, Oxford, Iowa.